Hello you botters, this is Lily with UBOT Studio and today we're going to be talking about how to solve CAPTCHAs with UBOT 4. Let's get right to it. Whether you're creating accounts or sending messages or whatever else you're doing on the internet, you're going to have to understand UBOT's CAPTCHA solving processes. We offer the ability to use three popular CAPTCHA solving services. These services are Death by CAPTCHA, Bypass CAPTCHA, and DCAPTCHA. We also provide ways for you to see how many credits you have left for each service. So let's get right into this CAPTCHA solving process. Here we are on the ubotstudio.com slash playground page and we're going to be working with the CAPTCHA form that's already set up right here. This is a very simple way to demonstrate how the CAPTCHA services work. But first, let's go into our tools menu and let's look at our CAPTCHA services and how to set up accounts for each one. So here we have listed Death by CAPTCHA, DCAPTCHA, and Bypass CAPTCHA. All you have to do is select one. Let's choose Death by CAPTCHA and input the username and password you have set up for your account with them. And once you've done so, let's put in some gibberish. Your account is authenticated and then your credit will appear in this area where it says authentication failed. It'll show you how many credits you have and you can check or uncheck it depending on whether or not you want to use it. And when you want to remove it, just remove it. And let's take a look at DCAPTCHA. DCAPTCHA needs a bit more. It needs the username, password, and then port. The API is already determined for you. So once you've put in your information, just like death by CAPTCHA, you will be authenticated and then your balance will appear in this area right here and you can check or uncheck depending on whether or not you want to use it. If you want to edit it, you can just click it and then edit it and you can change the information in there. So for now let's remove it and let's take a look at Bypass CAPTCHA. All you need to use Bypass CAPTCHA is just the key they provide for you. So you type in your key, click OK, you are authenticated and then your credits will appear right here. So you'll know how many credits you have in terms of solving the CAPTCHAs and you can check or uncheck depending on whether you want to use it. If you don't check any of the CAPTCHA, if, if you have it blank just like this, just like what we have right now, then you're going to be using the manual CAPTCHA solving service. That means that you'll just find the image on the page and then you'll type in the code yourself. If you do have a service set up like Death by CAPTCHA, then the solve CAPTCHA function will automatically use the service you have set up in here. So if we set up something for death by CAPTCHA, click OK, we check it, that is the service that will be used to solve our CAPTCHAs and fields will be filled with whatever the solution is for that CAPTCHA. So let's remove it for now. Let's go with the manual CAPTCHA solving process. It's a pretty simple process. So let's demonstrate with this page. Let's drag in our field or you can just right click. Don't forget you have many ways to get a field into the scripting area. So we have the field selected and you go under browser functions, that's where our solve CAPTCHA function is located. Drag it in and we just have to pinpoint our CAPTCHA image. So here it is, you click it and notice that there's an ID and in this case this example, the ID is not going to change in any way. It's going to stay the same every time you come there because it's just a simple example. But just for the sake of making sure that we know how to edit these IDs and make sure that every time we run our script we're not running into errors because the ID has changed. Let's play with the code a little bit. So let's look at what we can edit. Uh -huh. CAPTCHA ID, that is what we need to make more general. So we're going to use the wildcard function and we're going to select add and then it's already the piece of the code that is going to change every time we run our script 
is now a wild card, meaning the ID could be equals to anything and that's okay, just select it, as long as the rest of the code is like this. So click OK, and you're already set. So click OK for the function and then click OK for the type text. Don't forget to click OK or finish editing your commands and functions before you click Run. So when we run our script, the CAPTCHA code appears right here. We type it in SMWM and the field is filled with our CAPTCHA code. So, and then of course you can drag in the submit button and it'll submit your CAPTCHA code for you. So let's go to another page and let's play with another demo. But the process is pretty simple no matter where you go. Let's try that one. So we have our CAPTCHA code right here, and this is the field we're trying to fill with the CAPTCHA code. So let's right click, type text, let's drag that to the top, how about that? Okay, so, so we have our field already selected. Just go under Browser Functions, Solve CAPTCHA, and let's go find our CAPTCHA code, and here it is. And is there anything we need to edit that's going to change? Nope, it just says ID equals CAPTCHA. And that seems pretty straightforward, so we don't have to edit anything. So when you click OK, click OK again for the command and the function. Make sure everything is done being edited. And when you run your script, here is your CAPTCHA code. QD7QU. And you click enter, your field for the CAPTCHA will be filled. In this case, it seems like the field, there's something about that field here that changes. So let's go edit our type text and see what we can do to make that field, make sure that field is filled every time we solve our CAPTCHA. So let's go to our advanced editor. Let's choose the field again. So it's right here. Oh, there is a code. So it's always good to double check with these things. So let's go into the advanced element editor and let's put in a wildcard to that little piece that keeps changing. Let's try outer HTML. Okay, capture two. So that is what keeps changing. Let's choose a wildcard and click OK. Click OK again. Let's add a wait. Or better yet, yet, let's use a wait for command. So let's go under commands. That's under flow commands. Wait for element. Uh, wait, let's tell it to wait for this CAPTCHA image to load. So we realize that sometimes the width and the height will change for the CAPTCHA image. So it turns out you have to go in and edit the code for the width and height for that CAPTCHA. So you would just go to your advanced element editor. Outer HTML seems like it'll do. And just put wildcards in place of the numbers for the width and the height. So don't forget to select wildcard, click add, and click OK. Click OK in the function, and let's run our script. The CAPTCHA image appears right here, as you can see. Type it in, WP963. And the field is filled with a CAPTCHA code we just typed in. So, and that's going to apply for whether or not you're using a CAPTCHA service. You just have to select the field and the CAPTCHA code will be filled there. So what if we want to solve this spam check right here? What, how are we going to treat this spam check? What if we wanted to treat it like a CAPTCHA and we don't want to have to enter a value manually every time we end up on this page? So we're going to treat it like a CAPTCHA. We're going to drag the field into the scripting area 
and we are going to select the spam check question. We're going to go under browser functions first and then select the solve CAPTCHA function and then select the spam check question right here. Now after we've selected it we want to go in and make sure that we add wildcards for any value in there that might change and since it's a spam check question it's going to change every time you go onto the page so we're going to go in choose it by the outer HTML and then we're going to edit the items in there that are going to change. We're going to use the wildcard function of this editor. So after we've edited it, we click add and then go back to our page and click OK. Click OK on the command. And then once we run our script, it's treated just like a CAPTCHA. All we have to do is type in the manual answer to the CAPTCHA question and the, the spam check question and then the field is filled with the right amount we were going for. So that is how to solve CAPTCHAs with UBOT4. As you can tell, it's pretty simple. You just have to make sure that whatever elements need to change for any of the code in there are manipulated so that you can continue running the script without having to manually stop and type in a CAPTCHA. And you can treat your spam check question like a CAPTCHA. So that is our tutorial on CAPTCHAs and how to solve CAPTCHAs in UBOT4. As you can see, it's pretty simple. And I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. And if you have any questions, please go to support.ubotstudio.com and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you and take care.